I'm Jacob, with me is Thibaut, and we're glad that we can be here today and talk about Socrates. We called the talk CK Snarks for Developers, and that's exactly um, the goal behind the project as a whole and the goal of this talk today. We've heard a lot about the motivation today already in excellent talks so far, and I think by now probably everyone agrees that privacy is one of the big outstanding challenges in the context of public blockchains. And Socrates is a project that set out to address this challenge by allowing developers easy access to CK SNARK so they can improve privacy of their apps without becoming cryptographic experts first. So Socrates is um, supported by the Ethereum Foundation and was started by me as part of my research at Technical University of Berlin and is now used by a couple of projects and uh, we're also very happy that EY is building, has been building Nightfall on top of it, has been using it as part of the baseline proposal and is now, as we've just learned, building a very cool, even more generic privacy framework on top of it and they've been also collaborating with us uh, on the latest releases so that's a very nice collaboration going on there. Um, so what is Socrates about? What's the motivation? We've seen for example how Zcash innovated on Bitcoin by adding privacy and Ethereum allows developers doing much more generic things, having much more complex state transitions functions, building powerful decentralized applications that can do all kinds of things. But one of the big blockers besides cost of, have, uh, of on chain transactions, privacy has been an issue because all the information that goes into state transition has to be published to the blockchain. And the idea behind Socrates is to provide developers with a higher level abstraction so that they can leverage CK SNARKs or serial knowledge proof in, uh, in a more abstract sense to address the privacy needs in um, Ethereum based applications. And I think in the previous talk, by Michael, we've seen excellent examples of what that can look like and how they can even be an additional intermediate layers that really enables developers to unlock the benefits. So what is Socrates? Socrates is basically a framework and has a set of components. It has a high level language. So it's a programming language that is domain specific and that you can write off chain computations in. So computations you can run on some blockchain external load and then you can um, send the result to the blockchain, including a proof that shows that this computation has happened correctly and there hasn't been any cheating or any tampering with the result. And um, so Socrates has that language and includes a compiler which allows you to transform programs written in that language into provable constraint systems that are provable with uh, CK SNARKs. And CK SNARKs because they are just very efficient with regards to verification. There have been prototypes where Socrates has been used for bulletproof backends as well, for example, but their verification is more expensive. And there's a lot of new cool schemes coming out of research that we're also closely looking at and considering adding. But for now, um, CK SNARKs with their trusted setup assumption, they just offer very, very cheap verification, which is kind of a key enabler for today's on-chain verification. Um, so we support different backends, but this talk is not about these technical details. This talks about showing you what it can do on a high level and then going into a hands-on part where Thibaut will, will demo how we can actually use Socrates to write CK SNARKs in a way that is accessible to regular dev developers so they don't have to learn about the low-level cryptography to unlock the potential of that kind of tech, which is quite hard to be honest and, and takes a lot of uh, effort and time to understand well enough to be able to do something useful. So that's kind of the, the gap we're trying to bridge here. So Socrates provides us with tools for setup phase, witness computation, proof generation, long story short, all the steps you need to do to, um, uh, yeah, to execute off-chain computations with uh, CK SNARKs. The language is an imperative domain specific language has a kind of Python inspired syntax and um, it does not expose any of the intricacies that CK SNARK programming usually has to developers. 
It has some primitive types that you can use and also has more comp uh, complex types like structs that are user defined like lists and arrays and, and these kind of things. So it's a, a programming environment that regular Solidity developers should be comfortable with in no time pretty much. Um, the, the process of executing such off-chain computations depicted here, we'll do that hands-on in about two minutes. And we always start with a program written in the Socrates language and then compile that to an intermediate representation, which is an arithmetic circuit, basically, but enriched with uh, some information that makes the processing more efficient and in a way that we can easily find the witness, um, which is basically, um, uh, yeah, a satisfying variable assignment for the generated arithmetic circuits. And then after the setup step that I previously mentioned, we can then for that execution of that off-chain computation specified as a Socrates program, generate a proof that shows in zero knowledge, so without exposing detailed information of any private inputs to the computation or any intermediate results of that program's execution to the blockchain um, using CK SNOCs. And then the tooling also allows us to support, um, export verification solidity smart contract for the given uh, Socrates program. And then that can be deployed to the Ethereum blockchain and used to receive proofs and computation results. And it then verifies those um, proofs and accepts the result if successful. Um, to support developers with common tasks in the context of blockchain based applications, um, there's a standard library that provides us with all kind of the, the things we need for privacy engineering. Um, for example, that's an implementation of elliptic curve cryptography and an EDDSA signature verification uh, yeah, function that can be used. Um, there are several hash functions, depends on what kind of assumptions you have, whether you're using it for commitment schemes or for other purposes, whether you want to recompute hashes on chain or not. So we support char and different variants, Peterson hashes and the MIMC uh, class of hash functions as well. And some work in progress highlights before we dive into the hands-on demo are that we're currently working with the EY folks to um, include recursive proofs based on the sex integration that we'll also have a talk um, later on. Uh, we're working on more generic programs so that we don't have to adapt our programs for different problem sizes as much. We're adding more types and also better developer support basically by allowing simplified project configuration and even better usability for non-expert users. Um, Thibaut, take it away please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now. All right. I hope everyone can see this. So I'm going to um, showcase the workflow of, um, of Socrates that Jacob just mentioned. And for that, I'm going to use the online IDE remix, um, which was originally developed for Solidity, but now supports also Socrates. Um, so the first thing, um, that you want to do is to activate the Socrates plugin. Here I'm using a plugin that's slightly more um, experimental as, it, uh, as I want to showcase some of the new features that we've been working on. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a new file um, that I'm going to call um, main.zoc. Um, and here the program that we're going to make is going to be very simple. And basically, it's going to require the prover to uh, find the square roots of uh, a number which is public. So you have a public number, the prover finds the square root of that number and proves to the verifier that they know this number without revealing it. So in Socrates, the way you do this is by defining a main function, which is going to have two arguments. The first argument is going to be um, what I call the target, and this argument is um, is public, and the second argument is going to be private, and I'm going to call this one the root. Um, what we're going to return is a boolean, which will be true if the condition that I just explained um, holds. 
Um, as you can guess, this program is going to be very, very simple as we only have to return this Boolean. Um, right, so that's, that's the whole program. Um, now, in order to compile the program, I'm gonna use the Remix uh, plugin for Zocrates and just click compile. Oh, I forgot an equal sign here. Um, so we have a su successfully compiled program. Um, so once the program is compiled, the next step is execution. And then for execution, we can provide arguments for each uh, of the two um, arguments. And in this case, we can uh, have, for example, proof that the square root of four is two. And if I compute this, I can see that the Boolean return is, is this. And if I, uh, for the sake of the example, change the value here, we can see that um, it returns false. However, as, at this point, the only thing we've done is executing the program on the prover side. However, uh, we have a verifier on the other end who needs to be convinced that um, the, ver the prover actually knows this value here too without um, without this value being revealed. So that's where the zero knowledge aspect comes into play. And for that, with the proof system that we're using, we need to first run a setup, um, which I can do with this button. And what this does in the background is that it creates a proving key and a verifier key. Both of them are public, so there's no requirement on uh, keeping them secret. However, the proving key is gonna be useful for the prover and the verifying key is gonna be useful for the, for the verifier. Um, in the context of blockchain, in a lot of cases, the verifier is not actually a human, it's rather a blockchain. So we're trying to convince a blockchain that as a, as a user, we did some action or we know some data that we're supposed to know. Therefore, um, the verifier itself is going to materialize as a solidity contract. And you can create it here based on the verification key that we just um, Created in the setup phase, and I can actually open it here in the Remix editor. And this is generated by Zocrates for you uh, based on your particular program and your particular instantiation of your keys. Um, so the next step in this case will be to actually instantiate such a, such a verifier. And therefore, I'm first going to compile the verifier and uh, using Remix, I can, um, using the execution in Remix, I can actually deploy this verifier, um, which is now deployed to the EVM that is running locally uh, on my machine. So that's the JavaScript VM. And this verifier exposes a single uh, function, which is public. And this function does very, something very, very simple. It takes a proof as input and returns a Boolean true or false, whether that proof is correct or incorrect. So we have our verifier ready. Um, then the next step in the process is to basically take the result of our computation, which was here correct. So I'm gonna compute it again. We have a valid square root. And based on that and the proving key, I can generate a zero knowledge proof. And this zero knowledge proof is here in the form of parameters that I can pass directly to the verifier. So we can go ahead and go back to the Solidity, to the EVM execution, execution tab and pass those values to the verified transaction. Actually, there's a slightly better UI here. You can see actually the, um, the shape of the zero knowledge proofs that we have. So we, you have this three values, A, B, C, which are uh, elliptic curve points, as well as your input, which is the set of all your public inputs in your program. Therefore, your square root will not be in the set. I can now um, call the verifying function here on the, on the EVM. And I get here in the logs, uh, this call. And if we look very deeply, maybe that's a bit small for some of you to see, but we have decoded output bool true. Um, for the sake of the example, we can try to modify slightly uh, the input that we give, give 
trying to, for example, claim that two, which is our private value, is the square root of five here. If I change the input and I can call this function again, takes a bit of time. And we have a result here again from this transaction, which returned um, false. So this is the general uh, workflow that we have to deal with to, um, to create those neural knowledge proofs. Now, very quickly, I'm going to show another small example without going through the whole, the whole process, but maybe something a tiny bit more advanced that you might be interested in if you um, develop with zero knowledge proofs. So in the previous example, we were just proving that we, we knew a um, square root of a number, which is reasonably easy to compute. However, in a lot of cases, with, when we're dealing with commitments, something that's really, really useful is to prove that we know the pre-image of a given hash. And that's what we're doing in this case. So in this case, I import um, a function which is provided by the Zocritus standard library, which basically is um, the SHA-256 function applied to, to 512 bits of input. Um, these inputs have uh, a slightly different format that you would expect in general, but I'm not going to go into that. But basically, the, 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 the program itself has a very similar shape to the one I showcased before. You have a public value here that you provide as two, 256 um, bits, which is the hash that you're trying to target with your pre-image. And you have a private pre-image. And then inside of the program, you basically rehash the pre-image and check it against the value. So I can quickly um, go here and uh, compile this other program. So this program takes a bit, bit longer to, um, to compile. Um, here it's compiled and basically I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but here if I provide some values, let's say zero, zero, and here, all zeros, we can see that zero is not the pre-image of zero by uh, SHAT56, which is actually a pretty good news for the hash function. Um, and from there, I'm gonna um, give it back to Jacob for a conclusion. Okay, thanks for the demo. That worked well. So if you want to play around with the tooling, you can just use the in-browser IDE as we just did. So go to Remix Darby Theorem Walk and enable the Socrates plugin. Um, furthermore, if you are interested in getting in touch, um, we're looking for people from the community who are interested in Rust development because all of our uh, projects written in Rust pretty much. Um, people who are interested in state-of-the-art cryptography, integrating new schemes, playing around with things, we're very open to that. And just people with a general interest in programming languages, in new domains. Um, we're very just happy if people get in touch and see whether they can contribute on a conceptual level, on a coding level, whatever works. Um, here are some more resources for you to check out in case you're interested. Also check out Nightlines and uh, Nightfall and Baseline. Um, the top link, Socrates.kidabio, refers you to our documentation, also includes nice getting started examples. And if you have questions or would like to interact, uh, come to our Twitter channel.